Good evening and welcome to Beyond the Numbers coming to you live from our studios here at Kukumimle in Accra. Well, tonight, 535 days after Ghana's domestic debt exchange program, 61 billion cities worth of haircut, but why the apology now? We'll be breaking down the finance minister's Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam's recent apology, claiming that his government had no intention to send Ghanaians into economic hardship as he admits the impact of the exchange program has been biting. Yes, there's an apology, but we ask a very simple question. Was the DDP worth it? Now, after this short break, we'll be going into the figures and be analyzing the finance minister's claim on why he thinks that his government was not intentional in plunging Ghanaians into economic hardship. After this short break, beyond the numbers, Exodus. Back to Beyond the Numbers live here on Join News Channel. We are live on all our Facebook and social media handles. Tonight, we are getting into the narrative of the DDEP. We'll begin with you from where we began and also heightened by the apology by the finance minister. Why the apology? Was he a necessary step, especially considering the state of the economy mm. as we were then in 2022? Well, so Winston, tonight our job is very, very simple to analyze the apology uh, by the finance minister, Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam. And today we have a special person uh, on special. the show. Um, Caleb Ziblin is joining us uh, to analyze uh, this apology. We call it the big DDEP apology. The now, big apology. The, the, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, there are three things that we pick from that statement that we think that it is worth analyzing. Uh, so, walk us through this three, uh, you know, pointers. So the first key words in the apology was mm. forgive us. Forgive us. You know, when you read something, <laughs> forgive us our trespasses, us forgive those who trespass against us. But nonetheless, this is the words of the finance minister, forgive us. It went ahead to say, never our intention to impose hardship on you, being the ordinary Ghanaians or those who were hit by the debt restructuring. He also said that it was one of the requirements by the IMF. So these were the key highlights in the statement that uh, we deduced that indeed viewers need to understand. We'll mm. go back to break down why the apology was here a necessary strategy going forward. But the undercutting part is the IMF choir. It's a requirement that we have to meet. We understood that looking at the West African sub-region, a lot of countries went to the IMF. It mm -hmm. appeared we had six months ahead. We were able to meet our requirements. The speed at which we went to the extent that even the IMF chief had to come down to acknowledge that indeed we are doing well in terms of the negotiations and how the economy is likely to perform. I'm sure Caleb will be looking at these three pointers and we want to take a look at them again. First one, yes. you read it's important. I said, forgive us. That's the first thing, meaning we've done something wrong. So what do you do? Forgive us. And it says, never our intention to impose hardship on you. So basically the finance minister is saying that it's not our fault. We did not intend to put you into this kind of hardship. And the last one being, it was one of the requirements by the IMF. Essentially saying that, well, it's not our fault, it's the IMF. Now, if you go into the IMF program, we've been looking at, and I says that, when countries have their debt levels to a certain extent, sometimes, and their debt levels are assigned or tagged as unsustainable, the IMF precludes them from enjoying programs. And that's the reason why Ghana had to undergo DDEP. There's something that the IMF also says about performing a debt exchange program. It says it is like performing a surgery. Mm -hmm. You only do it when it is necessary. If you feel the DDEP can cause you your debt, your economic debt, you don't do it. You don't do it. If you don't do it and you don't do it well, you end up coming back to it like the way Argentina and uh, you know uh, Jamaica have been coming back to their domestic debt exchange program. And on our part, we had to do it on two fronts. We had to go to the, D the domestic space to perform the DDEP, and now we had to go to the external. Today, our focus is solely on the DDEP. So we've, we've done a poll uh, uh, on the Joy FM handle on Twitter, and then Caleb will be taking us through that poll. Uh, we are looking at, uh, you know, the DDEP, uh, some of the, what people are saying, uh, you know, on Twitter. We asked a very simple question, whether they are going to, uh, you know, accept the finance minister's uh, apology. So we'll, we'll be taking you through that poll. And there you go, you have it on the screens right now. Caleb, can you walk us through uh, the poll and, and what, what we have at the moment? 
Yeah, so, ye so yesterday in the morning, we put out a poll on our Twitter handle asking the public how they thought about the finance minister's apology, mm -hmm. whether they believed it was sincere. So, um, I like that fact, whether you believe yeah. it was very sincere. Exactly. I mean, yes. yeah. Yes. Um, so as of this moment, we have 1,600 views on the post, and we have 265 votes cap so far. 1,606, that's, that's huge. That's I mean, a lot, yeah, yes. that's a lot. But we have 265 people uh, voting. What's the outcome anyway? Yeah, so, so far, 85% of those who have voted say they do not accept the finance minister's apology, mm -hmm. while just some um, 15% say they do accept it. So basically, what this poll tells us, Winston, is that if you sample uh, 10 people out of those who participated in this poll and we are restricting it to the sample size, this is not, we cannot generalize based on this poll. Yeah. So if you sample the 200, 10 out of the 265, about nine of them are saying that, well, we do not accept it and we feel that it's not. I genuine. perceive, let me be in some of them issues. I yeah. perceive they probably may be thinking that uh, you, the finance minister, Dr. Amin Adam, was not a cause, did not mm -hmm. spearhead this debt yeah. action, and therefore the apology shouldn't be coming from, from you, but rather the former finance minister, Ken Oferata. In fact, there are people who say that Amin Adam should have been finance minister longest or... Irrespective, he wasn't. Now mm -hmm. he's now in the shoes at the moment. When, you, when he assessed the product, because the market responds to the leadership of the financial market. Right now, any statement being made by him as a finance minister triggers the financial market. So the position he had now, he mm -hmm. has now, tells you that he has seen the behind the scene of the numbers and he saw what is before him, he can project and anticipate that we'll grow to at this level based on the financial revenue standpoint of the economy. Nonetheless, uh, if the apology had come earlier before mm. from the former finance minister, probably the figures may change. Well, I mean, uh, isn't it a surprise that right after Kweku Kwarteng, uh, you know, said that the government should take an apologetic position about the kind of hardship Ghanaians are facing at the moment, before they even start to talk to them about their new policies. Now, less than a month after he made that statement, we see the finance minister coming out, and he's a big fish yeah. in this whole space. He is saying, forgive us, it is not our fault. I mean, it's one of the IMF conditions. We had to do that before the program would be approved. And if we are even enjoying economic recovery now, it is because of that painful DDP that we did somewhere at 2023. Now let's go to the numbers and let viewers understand mm. what, now, let, yeah. what... Yeah, so we are going to switch and, and go to the, the smart wall right now to explain uh, the data that we have. And so when you go onto the smart wall, you have this big figure that we are putting on the screens uh, right now. 61 billion Ghana cities. Now, why is this figure important? Now, when I mentioned 61, Caleb was laughing. I don't know whether he has a stake in this huge figure. Now, this 61 billion cities is the savings that governments got from the haircuts, uh, you know, from the haircut that they did uh, in the DDEP. $61 billion at that time, or even if you use, let's say, an exchange rate of 10 cities, $1 to 10 cities, we're talking about more than $6 billion. That is huge because government was faced with a debt burden that was unsustainable going into 2024, 2025, and even beyond, it was impossible for government to service this huge debt. We'll be coming to the figures, and Caleb will be working us through that, especially a component that was owed to the Bank of Ghana and the banking sector. Very, very huge. But what do you make of this huge savings that government did? They have made the savings already, but now they are apologizing for this big figure. I think government could have made more mm. of these savings if it, they have involved the key stakeholders earlier in the negotiation because it appeared government had its own template mm -hmm. and was pushing it down on the key industry players. That was what we saw the apprehension in the beginning by the independent uh, bondholders, by many stakeholders yeah. who foresaw that indeed the impact was going to be devastating on their livelihood. We saw uh, the Picketing at the finance ministry. It was more or less like a take it or leave it offer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, and you saw the first, the government has to extend the deadline about thrice before they can finally hit the target of the amount of In money. fact, if you count, we can count yes. about four phases of the DDEP. Mm -hmm. We will go through that, but it's good you mentioned that. Yes. Four phases that the DDEP, they had to open, reopen, 
before they were even able to get this 61 billion and don't forget savings yeah the kind of shaving that the government was said in the initial apprehension mm. that nobody was going to have any clean the shave, side <laughs> shave but the, the haircut happened the president said there was going to be no haircut that was emphasized yeah. in most of their statements but let's go to the task screen right now and yeah. caleb will be walking us through the figures that we are seeing on the screens the 61 billion CDs worth of savings came from these four sources. Now, Caleb, what do we have on the screen is in terms of the numbers. Okay, so um, we have four different um, we have four different bonds that the, the, that we have four different bonds that the government mm -hmm. exchanged, and then we started with the the, 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 the Esla bonds, and yeah. the Archie bonds, mm -hmm. and we uh, we exchanged eighty-seven billion CDs of those. Now, Winston, in fact, if you look at what Caleb is talking about, the Treasury bonds, the Esla and the Dachi bonds, yes. were the biggest component. 87 billion Ghana cities was actually exchanged mm -hmm. during the DDP. Let's go on. And then from the Bank of Ghana, they took 70 billion, um, 70 billion dollars wow. cities of their bonds and exchanged them. This is huge. Bank of Ghana alone, because the Esla, you can count the banks involved insurance companies and other things all of them were but bank of ghana alone the amount they exchanged was 70.9 billion ghana cities the biggest component after uh, after the um, you know the group one yeah. and even if you take it on individual basis the bank of ghana's own is the biggest if you look at the state financial statement of the bank of ghana at the first quarter of 20 last quarter of 2024 mm. you realize the losses that the bank of ghana has attributed and in their statement, the keynote, they indicated that the DDP also contributed to the increase of their losses. Wow. Last two, Caleb. Yeah. And then <clears throat> the exchange sound from the pension funds, that was 29.6 billion Ghana cities. And then from the cocoa bills, that's 7.7 .7 billion Ghana Now, the reason why cocoa bills, if you look at it this way, it is the smallest component, but Winston, the most important ones. Take if you look at all the the four components or categories cocoa bills is the only treasury that was exchanged t bills it was actually it's actually a bill so it's a t bill it's like the you know Normal treasury bill that we sell 90 day bill you know. and this is the reason why cocoa board is in this position now they have a very gloomy you know um, credit worthiness where they are even struggling. We know this year they want to raise 1.5 billion, but because of the restructuring they did in 2023, it is making it difficult for people to even lend to them because people are looking at their books and say, oh, this is the guy that did an exchange of 7.7 .7 billion Ghana cities. He could not even pay bonds in his own currency. How confident I am that if I give Cocoa Board, you know, a dollar denominated bond, they will be able to pay back. They are in the market looking for $1.5 billion. And the difficulty is that this time around, they need to find cocoa beans to do or to us to be able to get this loan. Last year, or even this year, we, we are learning they were looking for $800 million. Uh, you know, dollars. They ended up only being able to get $600 million. They could not even throw everything up. At the end, they had to say that, look, look, investors, take $200 million away. We cannot, if we take it, we cannot pay because we do not have the cocoa beans uh, to even pay for and it. And even the international market is monitoring the cocoa, mm -hmm. uh, cocoa board and assess Space. whether they can meet their target of uh, the, the bean for the near harvest. And we already know the shortfall of about 350 metric tons of supply, 50,000 metric tons of supply, mm -hmm. that many are unsure whether the cocoa board can meet that target. Already within the value chain of the cocoa sector, there are a lot of issues, including um, misappropriation of certain funds and all that. But we are, we are hoping that there should be a revolution within the cocoa sector because other than that there's going to be a challenge we maintaining our position again possibly the next five years as the second largest cocoa exporter now if you are wondering why the finance minister had to apologize Caleb walked us through yes. this four categories on your screens right now the fact that we had to exchange bonds in these four categories the treasuries the bonds the Esla Dache Bank of Ghana mm -hmm. and pensions but beyond this the shocker is next. This is the reason why we have most of our banks, you know, the private sector suffering at the moment because of the DDP. Now, the DDP didn't only affect CD-denominated bonds, but it affected dollar-denominated bonds uh, that were actually exchanged. Now, out of the 
$809 million of dollar-denominated bonds in our own domestic space, about $742 million of, of, of that was exchanged. That's about 91% um, you know, participation rates. Exactly. It means that, now I looked at the data and I was discussing with you, those bonds, their interest rates were somewhere around 8%, 9%. Now that interest rate was reduced to 5%. And that is a very... I think it was 5% reduced uh, to 3%, yeah. right? Uh -huh. and, you know, the, the risks about this is these are numbers because they are do dollar denominated. If you are to shift them going forward into the next three, four years, mm. you have to repay back some of these interest and principal. Uh, we never know the economic conditions mm -hmm. of three, three years to come. Yeah. Whether our city will still be at the same stability, whether the, our, our economic factors will still be there, but as of now, we can anticipate that our revenue shortfall has been a key challenge. The next government is promising to remove certain incentives, yeah. certain taxes and levies. How are we going to generate other sorts of revenue? In fact, the exchange oh, rates. Exactly. So a lot of factors, uh, if you have to project, you can say uh, it's going to be a big challenge. But we are hoping that uh, those whose monies are, be, are they expecting their exchange. Because the dollar-denominated bonds that were exchanged, they will get it back. Uh, Winston says they will get it back. I mean, the government says that so far, they've been able to we'll walk, we'll walk you through that yeah. data. But this is beyond these numbers. We want to tell you the story behind this $800 or $742 million uh, that were exchanged. Which of the institutions were affected? And why is it that the finance minister has to even uh, you know, apologize? So, Caleb, I want you to walk us through this. In the 700 and, uh, I think $809 million that was exchanged, these were the participants. And if you look at the first one, um, or, or, I mean, I think the, the figure is huge. $689 million coming from where? Our banks. Our banks. Mm -hmm. uh, deposit money banks. So the commercial banks that we have, they had $889 million exchanged in the dollar-denominated bonds. Walk us through the rest. And uh, after, after the banks, we went to our firms and, firms and institutions, and they took six, $69 million. Wow. Yes, that's a lot. And then the insurance companies took 0 0.9. Well, they, 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 they know how to, they know how to you know, um, <laughs> at least calculate risk, so they did not really participate that much, $0.9 million. And others, there can be individuals in here, there can be foreigners who actually came individually to come and invest. If you look at our performance in the international market, we happen to have a lot of foreigners who see our bond as one of the juiciest on the continent of mm. Africa because of our complexity of our loan structure, it makes it very interesting to participate in most of our bonds. So you realize that any time Ghana goes to the euro bond market, we tend to have interesting participation. This is one of them. No the anymore, no anymore. We were once the trailblazers, but right now, if you go into the, uh, the TBO market, there's a new darling boy, which is Ivory Coast. They are getting the monies. And when all other uh, sub-Saharan African countries are being kicked out, Ivory Coast is is making the magic. I mean, they still it have an inflation you, of... If you look at how Ivory Coast is going now, mm. in terms of assessment, in terms of foreign direct investment, I speak to a lot of investors, they, they lament. I was in a meeting where the finance minister, GIPC, a lot of them were there. And the key issue is how expensive it is to do business here in Ghana. Ghana. So a lot of factors they underplay. And this is one thing that the rating agencies will look at mm -hmm. and give opinions to any foreign investor who might decide to come into the country. I mean, Fitch is actually waiting on how we'll be able to pay what we've budgeted this month in terms of the coupon payments and those who actually suffered a haircut under the That's DDP. That's a, a week from now. Yeah, a week from now. But, I mean, if you are wondering why the finance minister had to apologize, this is a figure for you. You have your commercial banks, mm -hmm. the ones in the space, they had $689 million of their dollar-denominated bonds in our local space exchanged. Deposit money banks. This means that... The monies do not belong to the, uh, the people, the but rather yeah. they belong to who? Uh, the, the, the posters, right? I mean, this is your money that you gave it to them, and they bought dollar-denominated bonds, yeah. $689 million. And their monies are, have been restructured, haircuts applied. Firms and institutions, 
if you are wondering why maybe your firm is not able to pay your salary, they said they made some bad investment, they've not been able to recoup their money. Mind you, firms and investments had to, uh, you know, commit 690, uh, $69 million into uh, the DDP that was done. Insurance companies, they were not really there, but I mean, they, they know how to calculate risk. 0 0.9 million CDs and others. The others here is interesting. It can include individuals uh, who are now, sometimes they go on the, you know, the street to say, give us some money. Interesting the next slide that is uh -huh. coming now. So you take us to the next slide. And we'll see a very there you interesting go. Mm -hmm. assessment of the key in institutions that were hit in the domestic debt. We'll, we'll, we'll go to that, but yes. this is interesting. Exactly yeah. what I'm what saying. This I'm is interesting. So we realize that the consumer or confidence in accessing loans and capital in the sector, especially the financial sector, dwindled basically. So credit to private sector, the annual growth. So in 2022, the credit to private sector before the domestic debt exchange was around 31.8%. In terms of the growth rates. Yes. In 2022, the rates at which banks were giving private sector businesses capital. loans the was growth 31. rate was 31.8%. That's, that's huge. That's that's very significant. But after the DDP, we are seeing a relatively different figure. Caleb, what do we have on the touch screen? We have 10.7%. 10.7%. And if you look at the decline from that mammoth figure of 31.8% to 10.7% growth rate, that tells you that the DDP has really impacted the rate at which banks borrow to private sector. And if you are wondering why we are even discussing this and why uh, this is important to you, now if you go to the banks, you'll be charged a higher interest because of the DDP. And this is the reason why the finance minister is apologizing and saying that, look, I mean, we understand the hardship, but we have to do this. This is the reason why if you go to the bank, the bank can charge you as high as between 30 to 35% uh, you know, interest on the loans that you take. We have saw the banking sector recovery. Mm. I'll, I'll be sure that possibly we'll still be seeing DDP recovery. Le <laughs> <laughs> DDP recovery, DDP recovery levy. Uh, uh, levy that people are, are actually going to pay. I, don't be surprised. It's likely. This is what you were looking yes. for. Mm -hmm. Now, I want Caleb to walk us through this interesting trend that we have on the screens. Yeah, okay. We're doing the DDP to reduce the debt. But after the DDP, what is the story? Caleb, tell us. So... We're doing a DP, like you said, to reduce our debt. So um, if, if you look at the graph, you can see that our debt has actually been... been Ballooned, yeah. Exactly. And at a steeper rate, if you compare it to before the DDEP, and after the DDP, the DDEP, we now have a total domestic debt of 290 billion Ghana cities. Now, now, it's important you mentioned that figure, Winston. 290 billion Ghana cities. Now, this is even after we've done the haircut and what have you, forgiveness... Bank of Ghana had to forgive us about 50% of the debts we owe them. Government is still building up the debt. It's racking up the debt very quickly. Now, just look at it. After the DDEP, that's 2022, we've seen how our debt has moved from 190 billion Ghana cities to 290 billion Ghana. So in, 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 in simple terms, we've added about 100 billion Ghana cities to our debt stock even after the DDP. I, I suspect, this is just my session, that since we did the banking sector cleanup mm. in 2001 going, yeah. we realized that most of the losses going back to recover, doing the cleanup, all the costs and all of them tend to be a burden on the ordinary Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. So we saw the spark in a lot of losses when the government is trying to spend, definitely it will end up being a debt on the industry. So we've, I think well, it's one of the key trees. You are not including, surprised, right? Including, you are not surprised, you can yeah, see that number yeah, there. Yeah. Including the CD figure, our depreciation, and all of them in inflation, all of them bear burden. I mean, I'm debt. not surprised. I mean, if you look at the exchange rate, it's one of the key components that balloons government debt. It could be that government is not really borrowing, but because of the exchange rate, especially in the international space. Now, just look at it. 290 billion Ghana cities is still, is still huge. Now, this is our final, uh, you know, before we slide go. for you, before we go. Now, if you are watching us, the finance minister has apologized, yes. but there's a commitment that they are making. They say they will continue to pay the coupons. Already, they've done, they've done, they've set up three payments, they've done one already. The first one was 5.9 billion yeah. coupon payments in February. They are 
promising to pay you 6.1 billion Ghana cities this month. It's another one that was, that's going to come. That will be, I think, the, the third or so. Yes. And so he's apologized, but it's also giving you hopes that the DDP has been done, but government will continue to uh, pay the coupons. But the key question we asked was that, was the DDP really, really necessary? We've seen the graphs and we've seen that even after the haircuts and what have you, we've seen, seen the debts going up, adding more than 100 billion Ghana cities to our domestic debt. And our debt levels are still unsustainable, meaning uh, we, we, we have to do more to even reach the sustainability level that we promised the IMF. This has been Beyond the Numbers with me, Isaac Ophiejie, and Winston Taki. And our special guest was uh, Caleb Ziblim, who joined us on the touchscreen. Stick and stay. Um, there's more on Joy News. We'll be back next week.